his press conference as the wiener of the house. Let's listen to Mike Rowe Johnson, the guy who adopted a 14-year-old boy when he was a 25-year-old single man. That seems a little weird, but let's see if it's getting weirder. I was just uh, in our Republican conference meeting, and uh, there is such a great feeling of esprit de corps amongst uh, House Republicans. We are not only unified, we are energized. <laughs> so they're unified in uh, in uh, what, what, what? No, that's not, that's, that's not right. Yeah. Uh, ask him about Marjorie Taylor Greene, would you please? Ask him specifically. Let's see. Um, does that mean that you've been able to flip Thomas Massey and MTG in the last couple of days here on this Israel package, or are you moving forward with that? Well, I've had great discussions with um, Thomas and, and Marjorie, or close friends and committed conservatives, and I don't disagree with them on many issues um, and principles. They, they understand the necessity of us getting our appropriations bills done and <laughs> oh they understand they understand so that they'll they'll create all kinds of chaos in the house they'll create all kinds of chaos in the house let's let's continue with this with the wiener of the house here because he did talk about the israeli funding this morning speaking of the israeli funding and trying to get marjorie taylor green and thomas massey and others to get their shit together um of course he doesn't have his shit together either but let's listen so just to follow up uh, you stress the need to be able to pay for the israel funding as you know, President Biden has issued a veto threat on this bill. Would you consider putting a bill on the floor that includes funding for Israel, but does not have spending cuts, or is that a non-starter? No, listen, we, we are in dire <laughs> straits as a nation. And if you talk to leaders at the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the Pentagon, sometimes even in recent years under oath, they've testified before the House Armed Services Committee, where I, I served until uh, since last week. Um, if you ask them what the greatest threat is to our national security, you would expect, most people expect they'd say China, Russia, Iran, terrorism. They say it's the national debt. We have to address it. We, we have. <laughs> so people at DOD, okay, this month, do you hear what he's trying to sell you? Do you hear the bullshit line he's trying to sell you? The people at DOD, the armed services, the fucking military. Do you have any idea how much fucking money we spend on the military? Do you have any fucking clue? Holy fuck. It's the biggest line item in our goddamn budget in this country. And this guy is claiming that the military is concerned. It's our number one national security threat. Is how much money the military gets? What the fuck? Because that's literally what he's doing. Literally, what he's going to do is make sure that the IRS does not have the resources monetarily and, and with appropriations that, that happened in the Inflation Reduction Act to go fucking get money that the government is owed. This is not money that we're collecting or we're stealing from someone. It's money they are not paying because they're cheating on their taxes. And there's just not enough resources to go after it. And and. In this effort to spend the money to go after these fucking tax cheats, these billionaire tax cheats, is we are going to collect more money than we're going to spend. Okay? It's called an investment. Think of it that way. We're going to invest resources to the IRS to go collect taxes that billionaires have cheated on. And we're going to go get that tax dollar. And it's going to cost us pennies on the dollar. And we're talking about, we're talking about billions of dollars in funding to the IRS to make sure they can go collect bill, billions more in taxes from millions, millionaires and billionaires who have cheated on their taxes prior, prior taxes. They're not going to lock them up. There's a two-tier justice system in, in this country. You try not paying your fucking taxes. You see how that works out for you. See if the IRS comes beating on your door, takes your fucking house, takes your shit, ruins your fucking life over, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, $20,000 worth of taxes. Oh, you'd be fucked. But millionaires and billionaires, oh, fuck the government. We have to spend our money to go get our money. That's really what we're talking about here. Because millionaires and billionaires are like, yeah, fuck, just cheat on it. There's a whole room full of lawyers because they can afford to pay millions of dollars in lawyer fees to make sure they're not spending billions of dollars in taxes. Pfft, makes sense. But here Mike Johnson wants to make sure that he extorts the Israeli funding to protect Israel. He wants to make sure of that. But let's continue obligations and we have commitments and we want to protect our, our and help and assist our friend 
uh, Israel, but we have to keep our own house in order as well. And I think people at home, I think the American people understand that. At home, you have to balance your budget. At home, you have to... You see how they talk to us like we're fucking children? Don't you hate that shit? Uh, the American people... I think the, I think the American people understand that. Well, we understand. We understand what you're doing. You're protecting the fucking wealthy. Because you became the Speaker of the House, and the people that you that now you owe your seat to, all those donors that are now going to stuff your pockets full of money, we know what they want. They want they want more fucking money. They want more of our money. If you want to know the honest truth, they want more of our money that's going to go towards infrastructure. They want more of our money that's going to go towards education. They want more of our money that's going to go towards health care. They want more of our money that's going to go towards national security. There you f f fucking dipshit. But keep going. Keep digging. Make tough decisions. And Washington should run the same way. And so we are here to change the environment, to change the paradigm, the way Washington thinks. If we continue on the trajectory we're on, it's going to hurt our country terribly. And it's going to hurt hardworking Americans even more, seniors and the rest. So we have to, while we take care of obligations, we got to do it in a responsible manner. So I, I've made this very clear to the president, myself, in our in our cordial meeting that we had. I've made it very clear to our colleagues, House Republicans. I spoke at their, I mean, uh, Senate Republicans. I spoke at their luncheon yesterday. Um, I've, to every cabinet official I've spoken to, all the way down the line. That okay, this is why I'm excited about this guy being Speaker of the House. This guy's going to fail miserably. Fail. Oh, it's going to be fucking epic, folks. It's going to be an epic fucking crash. Just you. Mike Johnson imploding as he strikes the earth. This fucking guy. All right. Let me break it down another way. When Trump came to office in 2016, you remember he was saying the same shit. Oh, we're going to we're going to run the fucking government like like I run a business. Remember that shit? Mitt Romney said that shit, too. They all these fucking Republicans say that stupid fucking shit. Oh, we're going to run the country like we run a business. What the fuck are you talking about? What business do you know runs like a government? Huh? What are you talking about? What business runs that you know of like a government? It doesn't. It, that's not how it works. That's not how governments work. That's not how governing works. Number one. That's why this, this fucking run it as a business is always a fallacy in the first place. And then when he when he when he fucking talks down to the American people talking about how they're going to run the fucking country. Like we run our households. Hey, fuck you, buddy. You're the, you're the one, you're the one sucking at the T to corporations and making sure labor like UAW isn't getting the deals that they deserve from the big three. You fucking pieces of shit. Mike Johnson, you fuck. Yeah. Run, run the country like our household. Good fucking luck with that bitch. This motherfucker has never, probably never felt the plight of an average working American ever. Look at him. Look at this son of a bitch. So don't, don't even start with that shit. But the problem is, is this same old worldview that they're going to run the country like a business like they did in 2016 under Trump. You remember how that worked out? Eight trillion dollars in four years in deficits. Because folks... What Mike Johnson and the Republicans are, are selling is that, oh, we're going to pay for the Israeli funding. In reality, they're going to put it on the credit card because they're taking away money that we use to go collect the money that we're owed from rich people. That's right. So it's going to cost us more money. They're literally making it to where the Israeli funding is all deficit spending, not just the fucking funding in the first place which we could just run up the deficit for that spending. We could just put it on the credit card, as they say. It doesn't fucking matter. It's the federal government. We have the Federal Reserve. I don't think people really quite understand that. We're not on the gold standard anymore, you dumb sons of bitches. It's not a thing. And we're not going back to it either. There's not enough fucking gold. You don't get it. You need to, again, rub a few brain cells together, do a little bit of fucking research. Do your own research. Not on Facebook, on somewhere else that you know, makes sense. But Mike Johnson here is selling bullshit to his fucking sheep. He's not talking to us. He's not talking to us. 
average Americans that are like, wait a second. So you're going to take a money away from the IRS that is used to go collect taxes that, that millionaires and billionaires try to cheat us out of. And you're saying that that's going to cost us less money. They're going to run up more deficit. And the motherfuckers are, the, the, the sheep are so fucking blind and they're not going to change their mind so much that Mike Johnson just says it outright. Uh, here he is running away from reporters in a hallway. Uh, this was this was yesterday uh, when he was being questioned about the CBO score. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what the CBO is. It's the Congressional Budget Office. So what the Congressional Budget Office does is anything the House does, they see how much it's going to run up the deficit of our country. The credit card, as it were, that these Republicans like to talk about. They're going to, they score to see how much credit card debt our country is going to have. And when they scored Mike Johnson's plan to pay for Israeli funding with, with this IRS money, it's moving the money, which means that the IRS now does not have this funding. They're like, whoa, that's going to cause, they're going to have less money to collect more money. So then we're going to have more debt because we're going to collect less revenue. That's what the Internal Revenue Service does, is collects revenue. But apparently Mike Johnson does not understand that. Let's listen. If he even knows what the CBO is or what they do. They be careful, everybody be careful. <laughs> Were you surprised by the CBO score, sir? Not surprised at all. Only in Washington when you cut spending do they call it a... Only in Washington, uh, do, do they call it when you reduce spending uh, and that it increases deficit? Well, when that spending is supposed to go to collecting more money, yeah, it, it does. And this is the fucking boneheaded thinking. This is the boneheaded thinking that they have. And I'm I, I honestly watching this clip. Again, this is why I'm excited about this guy because I actually think this guy is so fucking dumb. He's so dumb that he, he's so dumb that he thinks we're so dumb that we can't see that this guy adopted a 14 year old boy when he was a 25 year old single man. That there's something wrong with that. He he thinks he's so dumb that he thinks we're so dumb that we can't understand that his wife's little conversion therapy thing when she tried to scrub her website of demonizing LGBTQ and uh, Q community members call calling a bestiality and shit that we know that you're a fucking Nazi friend. We know you're a white Christian nationalist. We know you're a neo-Nazi. We know what you are. You piece of shit. We're not that fucking dumb. He thinks we are, but we're not, but this guy is dumb enough to believe this shit. He just said, listen, they be careful. Everybody be careful. Try. Were you surprised by the CBO score, sir? Not surprised at all. Only in Washington when you cut spending do they call it a Are you alarmed an by increase the in the deficit. Because <laughs> that's not what a deficit is. A deficit is not how much, how much, how much you spend, or how much you don't spend. It's how much money revenue you get versus how much you spend. That's where the deficit happens. This, honestly, if we're going to run the fucking country like you run a business, maybe you should know how to run a fucking business then, Mike Johnson. Maybe that's what the fuck you should do. I mean, it didn't help that Donald Trump and Eric Trump, or Do Donald Trump Jr. went to the business school at Wharton. They don't know fucking shit about accounting. But apparently Mike Johnson doesn't know a goddamn thing either. That you have to have income, and then you have... Then you have debts, right? Income and outcome. <laughs> Americans who have a kitchen table know that. They go to their fucking job and they earn their fucking paycheck. They come home and they got to write out the bills with the money they have incoming, the revenue. That's how they make money. With the money that goes out to their bills, the money that they fucking owe. And then, and then if they have a deficit, meaning they don't have enough money to pay their fucking bills, maybe they put a few on credit cards, that's their deficit, Mike. How the fuck does this guy expect us to believe that he thinks he's going to run the fucking country like a business and this guy doesn't even know gap? Doesn't even know what revenue is. That that Revenue versus bills. And he's lecturing us. Don't you see how I'm excited about this guy? Oh, my God. This guy is going to fucking crash and burn.
And we're going to make sure of it. The messaging is going to be there. This guy is going to provide every single piece of the narrative that we need. Every single fucking piece of the narrative that we need to show the country why he should not be Speaker of the House. Every single fucking last little nugget that we need, he's going to provide it. And I know that sucks. Small Wainer Energy, Micro Johnson. Oh, I, I guess Rant had a new, a new song there, huh? <laughs> here, let me put this one on mute, uh, and you can uh, you can play that one over this. Uh, here, here's here's uh, here's a uh, small micro energy. Small Wayner Energy, Micro Johnson. That's a catchy tune. <laughs> That's a catchy tune. Thanks, Rant. Thanks for the tune. I'm sure the audience is going to enjoy all these little tunes that we've got. Uh, eventually, we'll be able to do all kinds of creative shit, and you won't even see it coming. Uh, so thank thank you, Rand. Thank you. And the audience appreciates you. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I, I Sorry, I, I can't. I got to do it one more time. I got to do it one more time. It's It's good. Small Wayner Energy, Micro Johnson. Small Wayner Energy, Micro Johnson.